Hi, my name is Jill Cousins. I run the Hunt Museum in Limerick, which is largely the private arts and antiquities collection of John and Gertrude Hunt. We have objects from the Neolithic um, through to the medieval and relatively modern with paintings from Picasso, Gauguin, uh, Renoir. I've been there for nearly four years. Uh, prior to that, I was running uh, Europeana, which I founded with the National Libraries of Europe European Commission and the Ministries of Culture of the 28 member states in 2007. Um, I left uh, because it was long enough, but also because I actually wanted to put my money where my mouth was or had been um, about opening uh, collections. In my experience, the main benefits of Open Glam are a couple of reasons. I have a couple of reasons behind it. One is really to get your collections known and recognized more widely, um, which has a direct repercussion on the interest shown in the museum or uh, cultural heritage institution. And so that those objects in the collections can be used to create new things. Like many of the items in our collections are obscure and without meaning to the majority of the world. So releasing them digitally actually gets them seen by new audience, audiences, their relevance becomes understood and they are appreciated and discussed. And having our collections uh, 2 and 3D digitized available under public domain mark has led to new business opportunities. The ability to actually earn money on the material despite them being in the public domain. So for instance, we're currently experimenting with non-fungible tokens with um, Hollow Museum. My second major reason uh, for, or the benefits for, for Open Glam is for the full use of museum material in education, whether that's for academic research so that we can mine the archives. Um, I think the kinds of things that Clarin has done uh, under the pandemic and, and putting out data, sharing data at speed um, is a very good example of that or whether it's used in the classroom. So again, the Hunt Museum had a major advantage when we all had to create museums from home at the start of COVID-19 pandemic, partly because a sizable chunk of our collection uh, was available. We digitized it, it was available as um, public domain or CC0. We'd already had experiments with Mozilla Hubs and could reach out to schools and parents to provide curricular supported learning using the museum's objects. Schools and teachers want to operate legally and they can use 99% of our objects uh, without fear of breaching copyright, including the 1950s and 1960s Sybil Connolly fashion collection, which has been dedicated to the public domain uh, by the heir of Sybil on our request. Then I've got lastly, a, a sort of a, a new reason, well, it's maybe not new because uh, we're talking about the ability to repatriate objects in their digital versions back in 2005, but it's new in the context of, of restitution. So for instance, we've got a, a Benin mask probably looted in the massacre, the British massacre of 1897. It arrived at our museum via the Augustus Pitt Rivers collection, some of which were sold in Sotheby's in 1974. This mask has been 3D digitized. It is in the public domain and is available on Digital Berlin. And, and that's part of a, what is likely to be a full restitution back to Benin. The barriers to open glam are still there. It's still fear. Um, we have a lack of risk takers in our sector. But of course, then there's the big one, which is the understanding of, of copyright. So that's combined with, with um, feelings of ownership. Um, I don't believe that museums own their, their custodians. They're, they're often supported by public taxpayers' money. So objects that are in the public domain should really remain in the public domain uh, from analogue to their digital forms. And I think in the same way, publishers don't own the article of the book. That's the intellectual property of the person who created it. So I think fundamentally, copyright is still not really fit for purpose as far as the, the web is concerned. Replications a click, 
um, kids copy without thought. We can't police it, but we can simplify the rules. It is right to compensate the creator of something for their lifetime and the period beyond. That's why we have copyright. Uh, the creative economy needs to be able to live and, and, and to be able to get paid for their work. And we should be teaching our kids the simple rule that if someone is alive, you may not copy their work without permission. And if they wish to charge you, that's their prerogative. What have people told me about um, open glam that's made me think differently? Well, I, I mean, I've been an open glamour for at least the last 20 years, probably longer. Um, I might have got thrown out of Blackboard Publishing in 2003 for being a big advocate of open access in uh, science, technical and medical uh, publishing. I started Europeana on the premise that we should put our cultural heritage out there for all to enjoy without barriers. And after that, um, together with other, the other big um, digital platforms across the world, we set up writestatements.org uh, as a, as a, as a complement um, to uh, a complementary uh, platform to Creative Commons to try and come overcome some of the challenges that were faced by the cultural heritage. Um, institutions with regards to telling people what the rights are in an item. I can't actually remember who said it, but when Paul Keller uh, from Open Futures, Ben White of the BL um, and Patrick Pfeiffer of the National Library of Luxembourg and I worked uh, with Creative Commons on the public domain mark and the Europeana public domain charter back in 2010, someone said, give people the tools to do the right thing, and mostly they will. And I still believe that. And of course, then there's somebody like the inimitable um, Mike Edson and his, uh, his, his 12 characteristics for the, for the common still rings true. What would I say to those people hesitating to open up their collections? Go for it. Um, I think most of what we have uh, in the cultural heritage institution is, is only interesting to a pretty small number of people lucky enough to be able to uh, visit that they've received a higher education, there's no barrier to entry. Opening up your collections, putting them under open licenses, opens up new business models, new opportunities, and the likelihood of harm is minuscule. <laughs>